Let's now look at solenoidal fields. So let me write the definition of solenoidal fields. So a field F is solenoidal. This means that the divergence of F is equal to zero. Okay? And as you, if you remember, the divergence tells you about the sources or the sinks of field lines. So this means that there are no sources and no sinks. Which also means that all the field lines are closed. They never start and they never end. Okay, so this is a solenoidal field. An example of a solenoidal field is the magnetic field. Actually, to be completely, yeah, magnetic field. So the magnetic field has a divergence of B is equal to zero. And this is one of the Maxwell's equations. And this is telling us that there are no sources of magnetic field lines. This is also called magnetic monopoles. There is no magnetic monopole where the field lines emanate from or, uh, or die into, okay? So for example, if you get a permanent magnet and you look at the magnetic field lines, they do seem to, to be born at the North Pole and die at the South Pole, but actually what happens is that they are closed inside of the magnet, okay? So every field line is actually a loop. So they are never uh, starting from nowhere, which means that if you now split the magnet into two, this turns into two magnets. It doesn't become only a North Pole and only a South Pole, but actually it becomes a piece with a North and a South and another piece with a North and a South. You can never isolate the North Pole only, okay? An example of a, a field that is not solenoidal, is the electric field. Um, electric field. So the electric field is not solenoidal because you can have a positive charge and you can have a negative charge. And as you know, the field lines are born in the positive charge and they die at the negative charge, okay? So the field lines are not closed lines. So this is not solenoidal. Well, this is solenoidal. Okay, is there any mathematical consequence of a field being solenoidal? Yes, there is. If a field F is solenoidal, such that the divergence of F is zero, then this also means that the flux, that there are no sources and no sinks, and therefore the flux over a closed surface, okay, so you define a closed surface and you calculate the flux of this field. This flux must always be zero, okay? And this actually makes perfect sense because they are not, because there are no sources and no sinks. Any field line that enters the region must also exit it. Must later exit it. So let me draw a picture of what I mean. If you have a closed surface, so let's do like the surface of a potato. to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be a sphere, it can be any surface. So then, if you imagine some field lines crossing this, this volume, the field lines are, clo are closed, they can never start or end, yeah? They go on and they will join at some point. So you always get closed field lines. Maybe you do get a field line that is closed like here, like that. But what is clear is that if you adapt the flux of the field coming in, so 
the field coming in, which is a positive, actually that would be a negative flux. If we define the flux as outward, this would be negative flux, yeah, the, the field coming in. It always exactly compensates with the field coming out, which counts as a positive flux outside of the volume. So they always cancel out the minuses with the pluses. And therefore the total flux on a closed surface must always be equal to zero, okay? So here, when I say solenoidal fields in physics, I'm going to repeat that magnetic field is solenoidal. No magnetic monopoles. But also another example in physics is fluid flow of an incompressible fluid. So water, for example, unless you uh, exert extremely high pressures, water is approximately incompressible. So no matter how hard you press against water, you are not going to compress it. Unlike air, which is very easy to compress, water is incompressible. So therefore, a fluid flow of an incompressible fluid is solenoidal because fluid cannot be, there cannot be more fluid coming into a volume than it goes out of the volume. Otherwise you would be accumulating fluid in that volume and you would be compressing it, right? So the flux on any closed volume must be zero. Isn't this nice? So if you find a closed volume like this one, and now let's imagine that the field lines are not the magnetic field, but now they are the flow of water. So if the water is not compressible, you cannot have more water flowing into the volume than flowing out. That would be impossible because then the total amount of water in the volume would be increasing and the volume is fixed, which means that the density would be increasing, which means that you would be compressing water to make it denser. And since water is incompressible, that cannot happen. And therefore the flow of water is a solenoidal field, okay? So the flow of the velocity of water, so if you do the divergence of the velocity field of water, you get zero. Isn't this beautiful how a concept that can be understood by anyone, such as water cannot be compressed and therefore if you have a volume, then the amount of water going in must be equal to the amount of water going out. And then we can make a mathematical argument saying that this translates to the flux being zero and therefore this translates to the divergence of the field being zero. So this is a solenoidal field. And now we can conclude that the divergence of the velocity of water must be zero at every single point. Very, very nice. So you can see how relevant the concepts of divergence can be in physics. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.